What's up, Piper friends? Welcome to Tim's School of Pipes and Classes in Session. Today, I am smoking some Seattle Pipe Club Bourbon Barrel Aged Plum Pudding in my Wally Frank Bulldog. So Piper Dave has been talking about what do you do regarding freedom? Do you just carry a keychain with you or have a keychain on your desk? Or what do you actively do? One of the primary things that I do besides just showing you know that I stand for freedom is I practice my second amendment right and I'm not afraid to let people know about it and I educate myself about the the enemy let's call them the enemy I educate myself about their beliefs where those beliefs come from so that I can better stand for my beliefs so today I'm going to give you book recommendations that I absolutely highly recommend you read because if you are going to stand for freedom, you better know why and you better be able to back it up and you better be able to shut down the arguments from the woke left. Now, you cannot argue with them using logic and that's why most people lose debates and arguments with them is because they try to approach it from a logical point of view and you cannot do that because they do not think logically they think emotionally everything they do is based on emotion so when you debate them and when you talk to them you have to do so from the same perspective which is emotion with that said you still need to have the logical foundation of what they believe and what you believe in order to debate them. So one of the primary things that I do to stand for freedom is I will freaking debate you. I am not afraid to say what I believe and I educate myself on what they believe, what I believe, and how to best articulate that. And I suggest you do the same. So today I've got 21 books sitting right here that you should definitely read now i read a ton i read 83 books last year this year i want to read 100 i don't know if i'll get there but even if you just read a couple of these do it it's well worth your time first i want to talk about woke ideology a little bit which i believe is the primary enemy of freedom today make no mistake about it it is a pseudo religion people are judged as being righteous or unrighteous based on immutable characteristics that they have no control over. First of all, that's problematic. But the greatest problem with this pseudo-religion is there is no justification and no salvation. If you are deemed unrighteous, there is nothing that you can do to become righteous in their eyes. So with that said, never, ever, bend the knee stand on your principles and never ever back down from that because when you bend the knee when you say i'm sorry for being white or being male or being heterosexual or christian or cisgendered or whatever as soon as you say that as soon as you do that you give them power over you but you're not justified you're not forgiven you're still unrighteous you're still the enemy in their eye but now they have power over you. So it is a zero sum game for you to do that. So do not do that ever, ever. And that's one of the best ways that you can stand for freedom is stand on your principles and never ever back down from that. One of the primary things that the woke progressive left does to trick you is they change definitions, right? You can say, I'm not racist. Well, you're not. By the standard definition of racism, you are not a racist, but they've changed the definition. And you have to know what those definitions are and the books that I'm gonna share with you today are gonna to tell you that. You might say, I'm not a white supremacist. Oh, but they've changed the definition. And you don't know what that definition is, but these books that I'm gonna share with you today will help you with that words they play word games okay and half of them don't even know right they're just sheep and somebody told them this is the right thing to say so they say it they don't even know 
That's why if you learn about the crap that they're spewing, it's pretty easy to shut them down because they don't even know. This has probably been a, around a while, but I'm just starting to hear it more and more frequently, and I find it disgusting. And it's neurodivergent. People with special needs, they're now calling them neurodivergent. I think that is a disgusting term, and here's why. For a few reasons. Number one, neurodivergent means people whose brain differences causes them to think differently. All of our brains are different. And we all think differently. Does that mean we're all neurodivergent? Yep. Everyone is neurodivergent. Everyone. What that does is what they primarily do is label people. They put labels on people because these people, can they have to think in terms of black and white, righteous, unrighteous, oppressor, victim. That's it. Their entire worldview is filtered through that lens first. So they have to put everybody and everything into one of those two boxes, oppressor or victim. First of all, it's disgusting because you're putting all people that have special needs into a box and you're assuming just like you do with everything else that everybody in that box is the same and everybody in the other box is the same well it's not true if if special needs is neurodivergent then put me over there because i'm not neuroconvergent because i don't want to be in that box with you because i damn sure don't think like you also it's disgusting because i have two special needs kids Come at me, lefties. I have two of them. I have an autistic son and I have a daughter with Wolf Hirschhorn syndrome. They're not neurodivergent. Let's call it what it is. I have a son with autism and a daughter with Wolf Hirschhorn syndrome. And my autistic son is very different than everybody else with autist autism. And my daughter with Wolf Hirschhorn syndrome is very different than everybody else with Wolf Hirschhorn syndrome. So don't put them in a box. And it's not because I want to ignore and pre pretend like my children don't have special needs. No, it's just the opposite, in fact. Let's call it what it is. When you call it neurodivergence, you minimize autism. You minimize wolf hirschhorn syndrome because you've just taken a whole group of people that are every single one different and individual and you've put them into the same box and categorized them and minimized them, each of them as individuals. So take your neurodivergence and shove it up your ass, you freaking woke ass idiots. Now let's get on to the books. So first up, live not by lies by rod dreyer in live not by lies dreyer amplifies the alarm and explains why it's so hard for us to recognize the threat of totalitarianism in our own time he lays out steps he lays out the steps for resistance during a time of tyranny boom live not by lies excellent erwin lutzer we will not be silent prepares you to live out your conviction identify the toxic responses secular culture disguises stealing from god by frank turek um, this is how atheist um, materialists steal from god to make their own atheist argument and therefore their entire worldview has no foundation because it's based on a christian foundation and when they realize that the whole thing falls apart the very best book the if i could only recommend one book on this whole list of books that i'm showing you the very best book to understand the the woke ideology where it came from why it's wrong and how you can fight against it is called fault lines by vody bauckham i think that you can get this for free on um audible right now right if you want an audiobook i think it's free however i do recommend the the actual print book it has all the original source material where all the this nonsense came from this is an explanation of 
left ideology and worldview and it shows how from a biblical perspective it's wrong and it shows how you can fight back against it outstanding book the madness of crowds by douglas murray gender race and identity um, douglas murray is fantastic i don't agree with his particular lifestyle choice um, but he is an excellent writer he makes fantastic points and he pokes holes all in this leftist ideology. The Coddling of the American Mind by Greg Lukianoff and Jonathan Haidt. How good intentions and bad ideas are setting up a generation for failure. This goes into how and why the education system got broken, what it's teaching young people to believe, and how it is problematic, and how you can fight back against it. Black Rednecks and White Liberals by Thomas Sowell. One of the single best books that you can read, and if you have never read Thomas Sowell, you definitely need to. Speechless by Michael Knowles. Some of you guys might know Michael Knowles from uh, YouTube. Um, he is, what's the guy's name, Ben Shapiro. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember the name of their network, but he's part of that network. Um, so this is all about how the left uses words and redefines words. The Parasitic Mind by God Saad. How infectious ideas are killing common sense. Woke Racism. How a new religion has betrayed black America by John McWhorter. Also a black man, a person of color. This explains how, like what I talked about that wokeism is a pseudo religion and how that is hurting black people woke inc by vivek ramaswamy yes the same vivek that ran for president uh he's written several books inside corporate america's social justice scam if you want to know why all the corporations are suddenly woke here's your answer um he is an excellent writer as far as uh, presidential candidate. Not so sure. He's definitely very charismatic. He has a lot of good, of good ideas, but a lot that he needs to work on. And then A Nation of Victims by Vivek Ramaswamy. Identity poli politics, the death of merit, and the path back to excellence. So there you go, boys and girls. Piper Dave wanted to know. Um, what are you doing, right? I was a football coach and a track coach for 20 years, and one of the things that I would always tell my kids, even my students in the classroom, is be about it, don't talk about it. Be about it, don't talk about it. Be about it, don't talk about it. So one of the primary ways that I choose to be about it is to educate myself so that I can shut down their nonsense and I have no problem shutting it down. I will speak up, I will speak out, I will debate you clowns from the progressive left, you brainwashed youngsters that allowed you, the university system to absolutely destroy you. I have no problem with any of that. I will speak up uh, where I see it. I'm gonna say something, right? Um, and I'm not gonna back down, ever. And you shouldn't either and take your neurodivergent and shove it up your ass. I'm offended. I'm offended. So, look, don't, don't, don't put my special needs kids in a box, you freaking loons. That gets me fired up. As always, I appreciate you for watching. Give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment down in the comment section. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these books. If you want some books on a specific topic, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I read a ton. I'm a voracious reader. Chances are I've heard of it or read it. So if you want some specific recommendations about specific topics, feel free to reach out. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Just click my logo right over there. That's it for this episode of Tim School Pipes, boys and girls. Class dismissed.